welcome to the second part of the DeForum Automatic 1111 extension deep dive. This time, we will look at the keyframe settings for 2D and 3D mode. Let's jump right in. Let's take a quick overview of the first part of the 2D parameters, where we will be moving our canvas, not the camera. Here we have control over the parallel motion along the x-axis, which is the horizontal movement, and the y-axis, which is the vertical movement. Putting a positive value into the translation x-input field, we'll move the canvas to the right, and a negative value will move it to the left. The bigger the value, the faster the movement. Same goes for the translation Y parameter. A negative value will move the canvas up, and a positive value down on the Y axis. The angle parameter lets us rotate the canvas by degrees per frame. A negative value to the right. A positive value to the left. With the zoom parameter, we can zoom in or out of the canvas by percent per frame. The default value here is 1, which stands for 100%, and will result in no zoom effect. Everything below 1 will zoom out, and everything above 1 will zoom into the canvas. If, for example, we take 1.05 as a value, we will be zooming in by 5% per frame. A common mistake is to set the value to 0 to avoid any zoom effect, but results in having a 100% zoom out and generating only noise in every frame. The downside of the zoom effect is that it sometimes leads to blurry images and animations with high denoising strength values. Since the last update of Deform to version 0.5, four more 2D parameters were added, which will simulate a pseudo 3D effect by flipping the perspective. The values are influenced by a mathematic equation and you can check out the link in the description if you want to get deeper into this topic. The entered values can be seen here as a camera movement and not a canvas movement, meaning that the positive and negative values have the opposite effects from the previous 2D parameters, as you will see in the examples. To activate the parameters, make sure to check the box for Flip 2D Perspective. The Theta input field flips the perspective on the angle parameter, and a negative value rotates the camera clockwise, a positive value counterclockwise. Phi influences the perspective change on the y-axis, a positive value raises the camera, and a negative value lowers it. Gamma will turn the camera on the x-axis, negative to the left, positive to the right. And finally FV. This setting will influence the focal view and the speed of the previous parameters. We will take a deeper look into the definition of the focal view in a minute. As we already saw in the pseudo 3D mode, we are also controlling the camera movement in the real 3D mode. This mode is using more VRAM than 2D, so be aware trying it with a lower end graphics card. In 3D mode we can use the translation X and Y parameters from the 2D mode to move the camera on the axis as we saw before. But this time we are moving the camera, so the values are opposed to the ones in 2D mode. The units for these parameters are also not measured in pixels, but representing a value in an arbitrary scale. It's best to play around with the values and see what matches best for your desired result. With the translation Z parameter, we get an equivalent to the zoom in 2D mode, with the difference that we now move the camera on the Z axis without the blurriness. A positive value moves the camera forward, and a negative value moves the camera backwards.
The 3D rotation parameters are using the axes as a rotation base, and if you ever worked with a 3D program, this will be familiar to you. The rotation 3DX parameter will rotate the camera forward and backwards, fixated on the x-axis. A positive value will turn it up, and a negative value will turn it down. Rotation 3DY lets us rotate the camera left and right, fixated on the y-axis. A positive value turns to the right, and a negative value turns to the left. Rotation 3DZ will do a camera roll, similar to the angle parameter in 2D mode, fixated on the z-axis. Positive value, right rotation, negative value, left rotation. Compared to the pseudo 3D parameters in 2D mode, the 3D rotations do not force a perspective change effect. A bit further down, we will find three more input fields we can work with in 3D mode. These settings will influence something that's called the view frustum of a camera, which can be described as a pyramid lying on its side with the tip clipped off. The near plane is the top field of this pyramid, and the far plane is the bottom of it. The near and far parameters let us define the distance of both planes to the camera. The FE parameter lets us set the angle of the focal view, and thereby the size of both planes. With all these parameters combined, we can define our animation's viewing, rendering, and focus area. Changing the FE value will also influence how the speed of translation Z movement is perceived. A small value means a narrow field of view, and therefore fast movement whereas a high value means a wide focal view and slow movement. A negative value will result in a zoom out with the same value strengths. Last but not least, on the very bottom, we can find the 3D depth warping settings that give us the possibility to influence the depth perception of our animation. This will define how stable diffusion interprets and displays our objects in the 3D space and can be visualized by creating a depth map. Save depth map will create grayscale depth map images alongside your regular animation frames. Mita's weight sets a midpoint at which a depth map is to be drawn. A negative value will quickly result in chaotic image generations and artifacts, but might be interesting for experiments with a more artistic approach. Padding mode instructs the handling of pixels outside the field of view as they come into the scene. Border will attempt to use the edges of the canvas. Reflection will attempt to approximate the image in tile or repeat pixels, whereas zeros will not add any new pixel information. Sampling mode defines the interpolation of pixels while resizing the image. Images resampled with bicubic interpolation tend to be smoother and have fewer interpolation artifacts. The depth warping settings are also influenced by the FE settings we have looked at before. The illusion of 3D is more pronounced at lower FOV values, and more shallow at values closer to 180. In conclusion, we can see that there's a lot of settings apart from the camera movement that will influence your animation output. The only way to get the best out of them is to know the direction and experiment with the approximate value ranges you want the animation to take. In the next part, we will take a look at the prompt section and experiment with mathematic equations in our parameter values. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.